is an introduction to Canopy mobile DSL language. We're going to start by creating a new project. I uh, select a new uh, item icon in Eclipse and I select a general project in the general folder. I will name this project um, com.canopy.demo and what we're going to do is we're simply going to add a file so I control click on the project name and I say new file and I'm simply going to say demo.mdsl file name um, is not very important. What's important is the extension. Make sure that you, you use an MDSL extension. It's asking you this question um, if that's the first time you create an MDSL file in this project. So just answer yes. And now you're ready to write your first MDSL file. So you're going to start by defining a package. So we're going to call it com.canopy.demo and then we're going to define a main element so we start by giving the application a name we're going to call it demo and we're going to use control space to see you know what are the, the elements of the this main element that we can define so we're going to start by defining a, a navigation bar we're not going to use a Splash screen, but we're going to define a start element. We're going to say that this application will start on the home view, and then we're going to define the menu of the application. So the menu is going to have the first view, which is the home view. It's also going to have um, a map view and um, a web view. So we'll we'll call it. The, the canopy site view. So as you can see, all the home view elements um, are generating an error because they're not defined yet. So we're going to proceed by defining the view elements. So we're going to define the home view first. We can choose a uh, you know, background image, a color, um, so let's let's put a color. Uh, let's go with uh, black, for instance. And as you can see, you know the color is a this color is predefined and it's been recognized as a keyword by the editor. Um, and then we're going to define the controls that are going to show up in that view. So we're going to use a layout. And we're going to call it a login layout. Okay. And again, as you can see, this login layout has not been defined. And and a layout is basically a series of controls that <coughs> can be reused across different views. And, and a single view can can have multiple layouts. And a layout is also a unit of binding. So if you if you create connections to you know backend services and APIs, you'll be able to bind this layout to a particular uh, set of operations and and therefore you know it's going to be able to display data and, and coming from those connections and, and send data you know back to to those data services. So let's continue and define the other views. So we have the map view, and you know I don't think we need to uh, define a color here because the map view is going to take the whole view. So we're just going to define the controls, and and again we're going to define a layout, and we're going to call it the map layout, and that's it. So the last view is the canopy site view. Again, it has a layout, and we're going to call it the canopy site layout. 
So now we're ready to define our layouts. So let's let's do the simple one first. So we're going to do the canopy site layout. And here, what what we are going to define is basically a web component. So we'll call it canopy site. And we're going to say to go to our website, canopy.com. And with a semicolon, and we've defined I forgot the layout keyword here. And as you can see, I can also uh, command click on the layout name here and what the editor will do is it will bring me to the definition so if, if this file was pretty big it basically would navigate you within the file to the definition of that layout and it works for any element basically you know if I want to go to the home view definition I just come here and as you can see it displays the home view so that's it. You know, we define our first layout. We're then going to define the map layout. So we're going to call it map layout. And here we're going to define a map component. So we're going to call it, you know, the uh, Beijing map. And we're going to use a standard display. We, have, we would have the choice between hybrid or satellite. So let's go with standard. Um, we're going to define an area of one degree by one degree. And we're going to define the Beijing location. So I have, of course, looked at those coordinates, the latitude and longitude, uh, prior to uh, recording that demo. And, and again, that's it. That's all I have to do. Um, this will display a view with a map, and it will provide uh, uh, the location of Beijing. Now let's go to the last view, the last layout, and we, we're going to define basically um, a simple um, uh, login screen. So let's uh, start with a label. We're going to call it, you know, um, username label. And the title of the label is going to be username. We're going to define some coordinates. Um, let's put 20, 80. Um, we're going to go for, let's say, a width of 80 and a height of 30. Um, in, in a subsequent video, we'll present you how to use Interface Builder to avoid having to enter those uh, coordinate by hand. You know, for for small project, you know, it's I think it's easy enough to edit them in the file. But for you know, large number of screens, you probably want to uh, use Interface Builder. And it's very very easy to use. We we simplify greatly the, its usage, and um, that really speeds up the overall process. So we're going <coughs> to align the label right, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to put a password. So I'll just copy and paste. Um, I'll update the elements. And um, what I can do here, I can, for instance, omit the data that's identical from the previous control. So 
here, obviously, I'm going to display it, you know, about 30 pixels, or let's say 40 pixels below. But because the width, the height, and the X position is the same, I can omit them. So, you know, if, if I want later to change my mind and put, say, 30 here, well, the next control inherits that value automatically. So that, that avoids having to change, you know, a large number of coordinates. So I'm going to define now the text fields. So the keyword here is text. And we are going to call it uh, username and password. So another alternative we could have done is use a placeholder um, in, in the text field instead of using a label uh, that's also that also works so we're going to use a different alignment we're going to use the uh, alignment left and we're going to use uh, the border uh, rounded with just a little bit nicer text fields and obviously the exposition is different so you know because we are at um, you know 30 plus 80 is 110. We can put you know about 120, um, and the text field will be nicely positioned next next to the label. Um, the Y position is going to be the same. We can make it a, a little bit wider, um, and the height is the same. So here, as you can see, I didn't have to change anything on the second line because it's going to be aligned with the label, and it's going to inherit all the position of the previous text control. So the last thing we want to do is basically add a button. And we're going to call it login button. And um, we're going to put a title, which is login. And we're going to choose to position it um, a little bit in the center. So we're going to put 80 uh, a little bit below. So Let's say about 200. Um, the width we're going to choose is going to be, say, 160. I'm going to put a large button in, in, in the height. So um, we can choose to create uh, kind of a Web 2.0 looking button. So we're going to call it. We, we're going to use the gradient style. We could use, you know, images, and um, I'm going to choose a green button. We have different variations, uh, so let, let's use the green button. That's pretty much it. We have uh, pretty much everything defined. I see, um, sorry, an error. I misnamed the layout, so this is the login layout, and that's it. You've created your first application, and in the next video, we'll show how to basically compile this application, so let me save this. Um, we'll show you how to compile this application, how to generate code, Objective-C code, and how to compile this code in um, in Xcode and get an application and we'll do that uh, shortly in the next video.